growth hormone deficiency is one of the very important cause of short stature proportionate short stature in children and good news is it is treatable with growth hormone so do not skip anything watch till end let's start learning i am dr triya virani malde pediatrician and consultant neonatologist and i'll be your guide for pediatric subject if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and give like to this video because lot is going to happen for pediatric on this channel before uh, starting a growth hormone deficiency we should know what is short stature short stature is there when height of the child is below the third centile all minus 2 standard deviation below the mean for age and gender so in this chart you can see there are centiles on this side age on the x axis and the uh, length in the centimeter on the y axis we have to plot the height of the child child or according to the age and the length and if the height of the child is below this red line which is third centile we are going to call that child is suffering from short stature so what could be the causes of short stature this is just a revision of the previous uh, lecture if you have not gone through it please go through it it could be the physiological could be a normal variant like a familial short stature or constitutional delay in growth and puberty it could be a pathological pathological is further divided into two part primary causes and secondary causes primary causes could be this many in which the child is born with the lower growth potential like uh, intrauterine growth retardation or small for gestational age or torch or genetic condition like seckel turner and down syndrome secondary causes are all acquired after the birth of the child and those are malnutrition chronic systemic disease like celiac disease chronic kidney disease and any other chronic condition which can affect the growth of the child these three are important endocrinological condition growth hormone cushing syndrome and hypothyroidism and the last but not least is a psychosocial dwarfism it could be because of maternal deprivation when the child is not receiving enough tender loving care so just a quick revision of the physiology of the pituitary gland those these are the hormone which is secreted by the pituitary gland the short form for it to remember is a flat peg f stands for follicular stimulating hormone l stands for luteinizing hormone acth is we all know adrenocortical tropical hormone tsh prolactin endorphin and last is a growth hormone growth hormone is secretory secreted by a anterior pituitary and it is stored over there and it has a basic three important function that it have a regular have a effect on regulation of somatic growth body comp composition as well as muscle and bone metabolism so looking at the uh, bone function it has a effect on increase increment in the linear growth as well as the bone thickness while on the fat tissue it reduce the visceral fat it reduce the lipogenesis and it reduce release the fatty acid from the adipose tissue so regulation of fat metabolism is very important function which is done by the growth hormone so what are the condition which can lead to growth hormone deficiencies it could be congenital could be genetic mutation it has a idiopathic gh releasing hormone deficiency where we do not know the cause of the uh, gs dysfunction and gs uh, is issue with the growth hormone release it could be a part of developmental defect in which the brain itself has some congenital defect in which the pituitary gland is not formed properly like pituitary aplasia anencephaly mid facial anomalies or septopla uh, septo optic dysplasia few of the acquired condition in which there is nothing to do with the congenital causes but later in a life after the formation of the pituitary gland there is some problem in a form of trauma tumor or radiation or it could be a infection with tuberculosis toxoplasmosis or could be meningitis or encephalitis we have to remember 2t and 3i 2t means trauma tumor and 3i means infection infarction as well as infiltration so how we are going to approach the short stature this is again revision of the previous uh, lecture please go through it if you have not gone through it first of all we have to determine this four thing what is the upper segment to lower segment ratio this is very important step a first step in a case of short stature to determine whether the child is having proportionate short stature in which the trunk as well as the limbs are proportionately short or there is a disproportionate short stature second important st 
step is to see whether the growth velocity is normal or not third important stage is to see whether bone age is equal to chronological age and chronological age is derived by the birth date of the child and fourth important step is a mid parental height that, that is mph to know the target height of the child to know the genetic potential of the child so here if you see the growth hormone deficiency as we already told that it is very important cause of proportionate short stature in children so uss ratio will be normal if you have not gone through the uss ratio lecture please go through it it is very nicely explained you are going to understand all the condition of proportionate as well as disproportionate short stature second step is to determine the velocity here the velocity will be there but it will be low a very important point to remember that here the birth weight of the child is normal he is not having any issue he will not be having iugr it's not a sg or anything everything will be normal at the time of the birth but velocity is low sometimes it is as low as 1 cm per year now looking at the velocity we all know that at the time of birth it is 50 at the time of 1 year it is 75 then at 2 year it is 90 and then at 4 year it is 100 so it is around 6 to 6.5 cm per year after this 4 year so if the velocity is too less then we have to keep growth hormone deficiency in our mind bone age is also delayed and puberty is also delayed mid parental height if calculated then it is not comparable the child is way 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 below the mid parental and target height he is altogether following a very different centile from his parents so what could be the clinical feature of the growth hormone deficiency as we already discussed you have to keep this point in your mind that birth weight and all parameters at the time of birth will be normal mnemonic to remember growth hormone deficiency is growth itself g stands for small genitals r stands for regular birth weight and height o stands for obesity plumpy child voice is high pitch voice t delayed teeth delayed bone H stands for hypoglycemia and hyperbilirubinemia at the time of newborn period could have a history of repeated hypoglycemia as well as prolonged jaundice but the good news is we'll have a normal IQ normal USLS ratio could be a part of congenital defect then it's obvious that midline facial abnormality could be present or there could be a presence of cleft palate or cleft lip when we are talking about growth hormone deficiency one of the very important condition to be understood is a leron syndrome in which there is a issue with the gh receptor growth hormone secretion will be absolutely normal but the receptor which is present is not sensitive to growth hormones so even if the growth hormone levels are very high the child's growth is very low it presents similar to ghd but here is a difference baseline growth hormone is also high stimulated growth hormone is also high and igf1 is on the lower side this is the condition which is not going to respond with the growth hormone therapy now to prove the growth hormone deficiency we need to have a level of the growth hormone igf1 and igf1 binding protein levels stimulation is done by this few substances one is insulin second is clonidin l dopa arginine gluconin and gnrh usually insulin and clonidin these two substances are used for the stimulation test now once we diagnose with the growth hormone therapy the first and foremost thing for us to uh, take a proper anthropometry as well as the record of baseline height and weight and then we have to start with the growth hormone therapy exogenous growth hormone is to be given 0.23 to 0.3 mg per kg per week subcutaneously the calculation are very different it depends on the body surface area also but just to complete the list i have just taken a figure from the standard book that this could be given as a part of growth hormone therapy but altogether for children the different calculation is also applied now what response we are going to see the response will be amazing because child will have a catch up growth in first 2 to 3 years in first year the height 
is increased by 10 to 12 centimeter per year it is almost equal to second year growth velocity if you compare so first year it the child may have increment in the height by 10 to 12 centimeter and thereafter it is 8 to 6 to 8 centimeter per year now after discussing the therapy the important question again arise many a times question is asked from this part what are the when we should stop this growth hormone therapy when the height gain decrease to less than one centimeter per year child is very closer to the target height or the bone age is for boys it has achieved the bone age of 16 years and for girls if she has achieved the bone age of 14 years we should stop the growth hormone therapy what are the other indication of growth hormone therapy as we all know that it could be a GH deficiency, Turner syndrome, CRF before the transplantation that is chronic uh, renal disease or chronic uh, renal failure, small for gestational age, Noonan syndrome, Sox gene mutation and Prader-Willi syndrome. So these are all eight conditions which is FD approved in which we should give growth hormone as a part of treatment. Now again it's a trivia time, we are going to discuss few MCQs from this section. Indication of growth hormone therapy is your options are A. Marfan syndrome, B. Congenital hypothyroidism, C. Chronic renal failure or it is D. Kleinfelter syndrome. Just discuss or the already the answer is there, it is chronic renal failure. In Marfan syndrome and Kleinfelter syndrome there is no role of growth thera hormone therapy, the growth is already there. In congenital hypothyroidism, we need to supplement with the thyroid hormone, thyroxine tablet, not a growth hormone. So, the answer, correct answer is uh, chronic renal failure. Question number two: A nine years old boy present with boy present with a growth retardation, propensity to hypoglycemia. Physical examination shows short stature, micropenis, increased weight, high pitched voice. Bone age of 5 years, which is which of the following is the most appropriate diagnosis? Here few things we need to see, it is growth retardation as well as hypoglycemia. Short stature is present and bone age is too reduced, 9 years child is having a bone age of 5 years as well as hypogonadism, increased fat as well as high pitched voice. Looking at the malabsorption, first of all malabsorption will not present as a micropenis and increased fat rest could be presented, it could also not have a this much of a bone age retardation. Growth hormone deficiency is obviously a first thing to arise in mind but we need to be sure adrenal tumor will also not present like this. Thyroxine may present as a short stature and high pitch but increased fat, hypogonadism, will not be and hypoglycemia will not be part of thyroxine deficiency so correct answer is growth hormone deficiency question number three characteristic feature of growth hormone deficiency includes includes all of the following except short stature since birth symptomatic hypoglycemia delayed tooth eruption and sexual infantilism now except so we need to find a wrong statement short stature since birth no they do not have anything at the time of birth if you remember the mnemonic growth r stands for regular birth weight and regular birth height they do present with hypoglycemia they do present with delayed tooth and they do present with sexual infantilism so correct answer it short stature since birth next question is deficiency of growth hormone leads to Delayed fusion of epiphysis, disproportionate short stature, acromegaly or mental retardation. Now the it is uh, one of the present one of the function that it is delaying the fusion of epiphysis. So this is correct. Does it cause disproportionate short stature? No. Growth hormone deficiency is one of the very important cause of proportionate short stature. So this is wrong. Does it present with acromegaly? No and it has a normal IQ. So correct answer is option A, delayed fusion of epiphysis. Question number 5, short stature secondary to growth hormone deficiency associated, associated with normal body proportion, low birth weight, normal epiphyseal development or height age is equal to skeletal age. So correct answer is normal body proportion, rest all things are incorrect. Growth hormone deficiency is associated with all 
except micropenis doll like face iugr and obesity we all know that it has a hypogonadism so this option is correct doll doll like face it has a plumpy face so that is also correct obesity is uh, iugr is incorrect because growth hormone deficiency will not have anything at the time of birth in reference to height and weight yes they do present as obesity so correct answer is option c iugr indication for growth hormone therapy is marfan syndrome congenital hypothyroidism chronic renal disease and kleinfelter disease syndrome this is just a repetition correct answer is chronic renal disease that conclude uh, growth hormone deficiency a very important cause of proportionate short stature in children i hope you all understood and learned well your suggestions are always welcome for the improvement please let me know what else you would like to learn from me Till that time, take care of yourself. Study hard. Study smart. Bye.